Hello friends. I want to talk to you today a little bit about what it means to set your intention for the year, but in order to do that, it's so important to look backwards. So one of the things that's kind of running through my mind is this idea of to move forward, you got to look back. So my word for the year for 2022 was the word welcome. And in order for me to think about what I wanted the 2023 word to be, I had to stop and say, what did welcome teach me over the course of 2022? There's some lessons that I sure I learned or needed to learn, or frankly, just don't want to miss. <laughs> So as I looked back over 2022, it's the process of what I do. And I spend some time in that. And sometimes I'll spend most of January in that before I decide on my word for the new year. But I'm asking these questions of what did this word teach me? How did I grow and evolve? What do I need more of in order to set my new intention for the year? So what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about what the word welcome taught me for my year of 2022. First thing I started realizing is I wanted to welcome in more peace. Yeah. I was waking up on a consistent basis with a lot of anxiety or fears or kind of insecurity, almost like this sense of, oh my gosh, what's the day going to bring now? And am I up for it? I didn't realize how much I was drifting into that. And I think, frankly, it was coming from so much growth and expansion in my work and my company and also just in the ideas and the books and the writing that I was doing. I was growing and sometimes my emotions weren't keeping up with the growth. And so instead of enjoying it, I was starting to get nervous about it because the growth was happening and you know, I think just human behavior, sometimes growth <laughs> is is met with so much excitement and sometimes it's met with a little bit of unsureness. So I think what I started realizing is when I became more mindful, I wanted to welcome in this idea of more peace. So I began to really journal about that and talk about it and of welcoming in kind of my beliefs around this. So this is one of the beliefs I came up with when I was started this process back at the beginning of 2022 in January. I realized the false belief that I was fighting was that I'm not allowed to live in peace because I have to be working on something. <laughs> oh my goodness. When I realized that, talk about a clarifying moment. What a sad way to live. I wouldn't want anyone else to live that way. I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't coach anyone else to live that way. I'd say, wow, sounds like we got to change your your belief. So allowing myself to just really be honest about what I believed about peace and the lack of it, I realized I needed to change that and reject that false belief. And I started inviting in a true belief, which is I get to live saturated in peace. And this gets to be my new normal. And then as I moved in that courage piece and courage is all about action, what action steps do I want to take? I realized I just wanted to stay more present to what was motivating peace and what was blocking peace. So that gives you an idea of how I started out my year of 2022. And that intentionality really took me on quite a ride. I didn't realize how many factors were blocking my peace. Um, later on that month, I wrote about a false belief that I'm rejecting that I'm alone. and. I'm doomed to fail. <laughs> That'll wreck your, your peace, won't it? And I begin to invite in my new true belief that God is partnering with me to care for me and with me, mind, body, heart, and spirit. And I get to love myself through this as I address what is keeping me stuck. So I began to even realize this other aspect of blocking my peace was kind of trying to do it on my own or feeling like I couldn't get the support or help I need. And again, you know, my faith is important to me. So how I integrate God and my faith into grappling with things like 
cultivating peace is a critical part of my bringing my whole self to this process, mind, body, heart, and spirit. And so I was just starting to become more and more mindful of what was blocking my peace. And as I began to use the word welcome to set my intention, I was welcoming really the truth (laughs) around peace. I was walking, kind of welcoming in what was blocking my peace, the false beliefs around it, and really welcoming in new true beliefs. And you hear me talk about this a lot. It's so important to do both. Kind of on one hand, you are rejecting a false belief. So you want to articulate it. Like I'm not allowed to live in peace. That was really a false belief I realized I was grappling with. True belief is I get to live in it. I get to saturate in it. I may not know how yet. I may not know how to do it on my own. But again, my true belief is that I have a power bigger than me. Which I call God and who loves me, is for me, and is pursuing me. So therefore, I get to step into this and grapple with this with a much smarter being than myself. So that's that's how I started out 2022, kind of welcoming in what I wanted to be grappling with. And that moves me into this next piece of the journey, which I started realizing I had given up a lot of my tire swing. And you all have heard me talk about this with the allegory of the little girl with the bracelet. She wears so many bracelets that weigh her down that sooner or later she can't go on her tire swing, which gives her so much joy. And she can't spend her time under the stars, which gives her this permission to really hear herself and honor who she's made to be. So I realized too, my clarity was, I'm reading my journal here. It says, I woke up with some more peace after giving myself time to rest and enjoy my Sabbath. I felt the weariness wash over me. And in giving myself time, I began to feel it lift. So here's what I did on my tire swing. I went on a beautiful walk. I got lost in uh, no Narnia movies. I enjoyed veggies, let myself get rest, no shoulds, no striving. That's to me what a day of Sabbath or a day of rest is. I grew up with the term Sabbath, which was just to really keep one day of the week completely protected to regroup, refresh, refuel. And honestly, I don't always do it well, but I'm finding when I do reserve one day of the week to just pay attention to me, uh, find my connection with my sense of self and the God that lives within me, I am sensing a whole new awareness of what I need for my life. And the way that I stay connected with that is I go and find my tire swing. My tire swing is a way to return myself to my sense of self. We can get so busy with doing things and pushing and striving and being productive and making money and taking care of kids and caring for clients and just doing that next project, that next thing, I began to realize part of my tire swing was missing, which led me into a new true belief that I grappled with and and really hung on to, which is I get to belong to me. And this is such an important statement for me. I think with someone who is a consistent recovering people pleaser, I start asking the question way too much. What will make you happy? What will make you happy? What will make you happy? And certainly that is a powerful and important question to ask so that we don't live in a very self-absorbed, self-centered world. But there's a shadow side to everything. When I am way over-focused on what's making other people happy, I'm not able to focus on what makes me happy. And then I lose my tire swings. And then I'm focusing on just making sure that I keep up with the bracelets and I'm balancing everything. So finding that tire swing helped me move into cultivating more peace. I also started doing what I call peace prayers. I would wake up with my true belief saying things like, how do I get to invite in peace today? And And in that space, not trying to answer it myself, but inviting in the presence of God to say, to guide me and direct me. It was me literally asking a very intelligent question 
with the faith that I was going to get an answer. So I get to invite in a power and an energy that comes from peace, not from striving, not from anxiety. And that began to be more of what I call my peace prayer, where I would say, how do I get to use peace to energize me, not stress, not productivity, not busyness, not intellect, not all these other things that sometimes fuel us and move us forward and sometimes honestly work. I wanted to be able to reach for my power source of peace that comes from a much higher level than me. And I began to realize how powerful it was to own and start the day, but own my power to be able to access peace. That is a really powerful feeling. And I realized how much I give, I give that power to cultivate peace and access peace. I give it away. I give it away way too much. So as I'm maturing and moving to the last third of my life, it's learning how to hang on to that power to cultivate peace. I had a large event that came up. Um, it was an executive retreat that I was hosting and leading. And sometimes these clearly can create anxiety and angst. Oh my goodness. I woke up the first day of that. And this was in later January. I'm just looking at my journal entry and it's just saying, I woke up excited about my day because I could feel that I was being fueled and motivated by peace. This is a significant shift for me. Someone is more type A and wanting to get all their ducks in a row and all their T's crossed and her I's dotted. A lot of my fueling came from a sense of striving, anxiety, worry, oh, just getting the job done, working the problem. And like I said, this does work for a season, but it's not a sustainable, thriving life. It becomes a survival technique that we do to survive life. And our goal is to start moving more and more into thrival methods. So I can wake up trying to tackle my day, or I can wake up inviting in peace and saying my peace prayers to invite in a presence that is going to allow me to cultivate peace and be fueled by peace and energized by peace, not energized by stress or striving anxiety. And that's when that shift started coming more for me at this first half of the year of just this awareness that I have the power to grow my peace and my energy gets to be connected to that sense of peace. One of the false beliefs I had to tackle was I have to subject myself to dark energy to get loved, valued, and be seen. I only deserve dark energy to motivate me. I don't deserve to feel loved. I have to just take what people give me. Well, there's no level of peace in that. And in my opinion, there's no sense of a loving God in that. What I began to realize is that was me telling myself stories about how peace got to play a part of my life. And again, thinking back on my word welcome, I'm not just welcoming in peace, but I'm welcoming in the truth around peace. And to live in that intentionality to say, what is blocking my peace today and how do I cultivate it was a very powerful um, shift for me. And my true belief that began to really grow was saying, I am increasing my power to grow my inner energy that is fueled by peace. I wanted everything I said and did that day, whether as a coach or as a parent or as a friend or as a family member, or as a spouse, I wanted everything to be motivated and fueled by a sense of a peaceful presence. This isn't something that comes naturally to me, but I'm realizing it is something that is what I want to welcome more in, into, and I don't even think I realized that I could do that. So I moved into that courage piece. Courage is all about action. And what I said for that day was I get to pause and not do anything until I feel peace. This began to be a conscious 
connection for me to say, don't move forward. Don't pick up that phone and make that call. Don't respond to that. Don't take one more step forward until you're able to check and say, this is coming from a place of peace. Unbeknownst to me, that became a really powerful peace prayer practice for me because I had to make some really big decisions that honestly could really make me feel stressful or anxious because I've never done some of these things before and realizing, wait a minute, I get to be fueled by peace. The cool thing about that is that if I wasn't feeling a sense of peace, it was telling me and signaling to me, whether in my body or in my mind or my heart, that I needed to say no to this or I needed to decline this. So as I moved through this journey, this was really representative of the first half of my year for 2022. I began to wake up more feeling peace. I began to notice the barriers that were blocking me from my peace. Uh, one of my journal entries that I'm reading here is I woke up. Here's my clarity. I woke up more powerful and yet feeling very alert. Interesting how I wake up with such an active mind. That's just while I wrote for clarity for confidence. You know, that's all about our beliefs. I started realizing I'm feeling a subtle shift in my control central nervous system. It's starting to believe it gets to relax. I was not aware that my body was not agreeing with my desire to have peace. My body and my mind were not in sync. My mind and my heart and my spirit were all cultivating peace, but my body was still on high alert. Learning how to relax my central nervous system became a huge part of my, my journey to make sure all the pieces were in sync. And then as I started understanding that my body is communicating to me where peace is being held or not, I just started really paying attention to where my face felt tight or my, my body felt tight or stiff. And one of the true beliefs I began to cultivate is I get to live free and enjoy my life without fear, obligation, or guilt. My body was communicating to me that it had it was holding a lot of fear and obligation and guilt. And that's another huge peace blocker, isn't it? <laughs> if I am allowing fear and obligation and guilt to run havoc inside of me, it begins to tell me stories that aren't true. And it and I begin to move in ways in my life that aren't aligned with a life-giving true sense of self, but it's really more aligned with this um, fear that we're going to disappoint or let people down or fail or get it wrong. Ugh, talk about dark energy. Talk about dark power. It's not what I want. Um, this welcoming in the truth around that was so powerful for me because I realized, oh my goodness, I can partner with whatever I want to partner with each day. Sometimes we live, and I know I do, I live with a sense of kind of almost a victim of life. Well, whatever the day brings to wake up and to be more intentional about what I'm going to invite in and what I'm going to reject. I believe this so strongly. And you see me do this when I work with groups. I did it the other last week when I was working at a keynote, I did it with the whole room and it was so powerful. Within two minutes, the whole room was aligned with how we are inviting in Things like freedom and hope and, and uh, joy and comfort and resolve and abundance and how we're rejecting things like scarcity and chaos and confusion and defensiveness. These were all about 60 plus nonprofits in the room who are doing great things in the world, but living with this intentionality of what we get to invite in and what do we get to reject. That is such a powerful way to live and it doesn't take long. So I do it with groups all the time, but it's also a reminder of how many times do I wake up and just got to start drifting into my day, learning how to have this intentional awareness of what you want to invite in and reject, even if it's only a minute or two, can change the whole course of your day. And that's where we want to really have our clarity. What is it that we are waking up in? What is it that we're sitting in? And what is it we want to keep and what is it we want to get rid of? What do we want to truly invite in to replace something that's not helping us? And so that's when I begin to also realize 
I don't have to carry this on my own because I started drifting to that next piece of, uh, okay, I got to be really intentional about biting in and rejecting. And so therefore it's all on me. Well, this is another false belief that I unfortunately live with way too much. And this is why my faith is so important to me. It reminds me of the 12 steps. I, I so resonate with the 12 step program because it's recognizing that there's a power beyond yourself. That's the whole essence of what breaks the addiction. And I have my own addictions to busyness and to success and to fear of failure and to life and productivity and food and all these things that we try and distract ourselves with. Learning how to say, I get to stop, drop, and ask for help because as much as I want to have this intentionality to invite in peace, <laughs> I don't have to do this all on my own. So learning how to have this prayer and say, oh, today is harder than others. This morning is harder than others. I'm looking at my journal entry here and it's, I'm reading, you know, I feel unsettled. I'm unsure about what's next. I need to feel the tiredness and the fatigue or wash over me. Otherwise I'll keep pushing so much to do so much to take care of. I mean, that's how I woke up. That was my clarity of what I was feeling. And then there's this poignant line I wrote, I need help taking care of myself. Just writing that, that was part of my clarity, moved me right into my false belief of, I have to take care of myself. That's what was emerging for me in my clarity. And going into that true belief that said, I get God. I just get God. And God gets to offer me peace that I can't find for myself. And I get help with this. That's where my faith is so powerful for me, where I get to admit that I am not God. I am not able to do this all on my own. So I'm right there with all the 12 steppers. I drop to my own knees and say, and admit that I cannot do life on my own. And that's where my faith becomes very real for me. So as I want to ask, cultivate more peace, I'm starting to ask for more help in this. Um, that also began this powerful journey of how I was waking up with a lot of hard emotions. I was not expecting that, but when you start out on a journey to sit, to cultivate something like peace, you got to welcome the good with the bad, <laughs> the good, all the good, yummy feelings of, Oh, this is wonderful. This is euphoric. I do feel it's peace. And there were mornings I woke up that way. But there were also mornings that I woke up with dark clouds and hard th thoughts and anxious thinking and fearful thinking. But I use it as this catalyst to recognize this is what's blocking me from my peace. So as I felt some of these hard emotions, I would say, now what's behind it? And that's where the false beliefs would come out. And unfortunately, I'm way too smart and way too creative. So my false beliefs <laughs> are, are large and numerous. I've got a lot of them. And I, I kind of joke that way with people because I work with a lot of intelligent, creative people. And I say, the more intelligent you are and the more creative you are, the more false beliefs you are going to come up with. Your list is going to be long. But learning that they creep up and how to look at them quicker and faster and then shift, not only reject it, but then shift it into a true belief. That's really where... We talk about the clarity and the confidence and the courage, but this is that trifecta where you get to start transforming your mind and you get to start transforming, um, doing transformational living that actually changes who you are in ways that you really know deep down you're meant to become. So that's why you're going to hear me keep talking about this clarity, confidence, courage. I journal this way. Clarity is usually... A paragraph, maybe a couple pages if I'm really into it, but sometimes it's just a couple sentences to say, what's my clarity? What am I waking up with this morning? Or what am I facing if I have to stop and journal throughout the day? It's to help me center myself. Out of that clarity, you start hearing what you're believing. You start hearing the false beliefs, you start hearing true beliefs. And that's where I move into the confidence. And I start the process of rejecting that false belief and inviting a true belief. Courage then is moving on to that action step to say, well, how am I going to take action based on what I've learned today? 
So that's the first half of 2022. As I move more into the second half, wow, life hit me hard. I was not expecting it, but I was very grateful that I had been guided to cultivate a mindset of peace because somewhere around August, I said goodbye to my last child as he moved into college. And so all the emotions around that of having so much joy and pride and how hard they worked and where they're launching to college and then grappling simultaneously with the loss and the sorrow and the grief. Then you compound it and moving it into 30 plus years of marriage where literally these two kids have been our, our pet project. They have been our, our, the, the topic of so much action and movement and conversation and energy in our home. And all of a sudden it's gone. What in the world? So much disorientation, so much change. Learning how to welcome in both the joy and the sorrow was really my next piece in my journey. And I'm so grateful for that first half of the year that I had welcomed in peace because it prepared me to welcome in some of the struggles. And what I learned was I'm returning back because of out of the, some of the sorrows and the struggles and the uh, transition and saying goodbye to my son, I started returning some old false beliefs. Um, I was, one of my journal entries here is I've spent a lot of energy striving, goals, achieving, producing, productive work. It's all created a bit of an addictive high for me. Ooh, that's a sobering thought to have clarity on. So that was my clarity. That was somewhere in August. And I moved into rejecting that false belief that success comes with striving and pushing and achieving and producing. That is not at all what I want, but it's what I can easily drift into, particularly under pressure, particularly under stress sorrow, grieving. These were all some hard uh, spaces that I was entering into. And I was starting to just drift back into what I knew, what I got me through. And let me be clear here. I want to pause on this and say, this is some of that survival thinking. And that's not always necessarily bad. We need to survive moments in life. And some of us get really good at that. I got really good at it. What works against me. And in the shadow side of that is I start getting stuck in survival mode. I have to push, I have to produce. This is what is expected of me. That's, that's only going to hurt me in the long run. It's not going to allow me to evolve into the, to my best self, but also into being a better human <laughs> to this world, learning how to say, I get to believe that I'm being led and guided as I release and receive. That became the true belief that I began to reach for. And you're hearing me talk so much about my beliefs and the true beliefs. I want to just say true beliefs can feel too good to be true. That's usually a sign that that's the, that's the belief you need to reach for. So the way I picture it is, is I am just reaching out for this lifeline. I'm in the middle of this huge storm in this ocean and I'm going down but someone throws out this lifeline and I'm reaching for it. That's what a true belief is for me. It doesn't mean I'm securely on solid ground or on a ship and I'm being rescued. It means I am reaching for something. I'm beginning the process of being rescued. So that is a real important distinction to make because sometimes we can we can feel this true belief coming at us, but in the middle of a storm, nothing about it feels true. And so we want to reject it. And I don't blame you. I want to do that too, but that's where our faith can kind of kick in. If you can just lift up your hand and reach for it, that's the first step. You begin to cultivate that over the course of the next about 30 days. We're showing about five minutes a day, neuro, neuroplasticity, neuro, neuroscientists are starting to show that that's what we need. About five minutes a day for about 30 days begins the process of shifting, creating new neural pathways in your brain to start the the, to shift your mindset in ways that will help you instead of work against you. 
So I know this in my head and that's what helps me just reach for that lifeline. As I feel like maybe my world is going down or things are falling apart around me. I guess my true belief is there's always a lifeline. Sometimes I have to look harder for it. Sometimes it is really hard to grab onto and it's slippery, but there's always a lifeline. And if you can hang on long enough, you're not alone in it. You're not alone in it with um, people that come by with God that is constantly there with your sense of self. (laughs) You're a person. You are in this, hanging on to that. And it's that lifeline that begins the process of pulling you up and getting you on steady ground again. The temptation can be, I don't want to grab that lifeline because it doesn't feel true. So I just might as well flail around the ocean. That's what we do sometimes because the true belief almost feels too hopeful, too risky. One of the most courageous things you can do is begin the process of rejecting a false belief, which feels stinking true. (laughs) I just was reading about stinking thinking. Richard Moore was talking about that. It can feel like this way too true. I am going down. I I don't have help. There's things that feel true in the moment. My son is leaving. I am going to miss him. Now what? How do I move into this transition? How do, how do we as a marriage navigate this next piece? Oh my goodness. I had more questions than I had answers. And then in the middle of it, my company is evolving and growing. So I have a lot I have to address there. It was a very rough season. Of course, looking back on it now, I can say, oh, yeah, I was changing and growing. In the middle of it all, kind of felt like the wheels were falling off. And that's what change can do sometimes. And, you know, I think I say this quite a bit in my coaching. Everybody wants breakthrough until they start experiencing it. Breakthrough is not fun. The process of breakthrough is pretty traumatic because you have to peel back all the layers of what got you to where you're at. And then you've got to try and get new ways of thinking to get you to new places. Makes me think of that book, What Got You Here Will Not Get You There. I haven't read the book, but just the title alone makes me love that thought that we outgrow ways of thinking. And so we have to recognize that we need new ways of thinking. But as in the process of letting go, it's scary, it's vulnerable, sometimes terrifying, traumatizing. It's a lot of hard emotions. But what I want to gently whisper to each of you is, oh, yeah, that's breakthrough. That's breakthrough. You'll feel the euphoria of it later. Right now, we just kind of feel the trauma of it. I was reading the Richard Rohr's book today about the 12 steps. And I just loved his comment of saying that as alcoholics are reaching or releasing or any kind of addicts are releasing things in their life, there's claw marks on it. Oh my goodness. I I can relate. I don't release easily, but I know that as I age, the releasing is what we need in order to engage that full sense of presence and peace and actual true connection to self. During this season, this is where I welcome in what I call this tension of holding sorrow and joy. And I didn't realize I could hold both simultaneously. I also began to realize that there was what I call joy blockers. I started really developing this um, clarity around what was blocking my joy. I was dealing with a lot of people in crisis that was blocking my joy. I was taking too much of it on, taking too much at home with me. I was responding to every crisis at like a um, Mach 10 level. And I was too empathetic. I had to like put boundaries around my empathy. So I began to really respond with, "Do is this a yellow light, a green light, or a red light? Like how, how do I want to move in this? That alone was an important practice for me to just slow it down and say, how am I going to engage with this situation? Do I need to pause? Is it full steam ahead? Is it, is it a denial? No, it's a red light. <laughs> that idea of yellow, red, and uh, green light helped me start monitoring more of what 
I could do during that season as I was navigating so much change in my life, my personal life, and in my professional life. And I could feel that I was hitting my limit. And I think we all know when we're starting to hit that limit, I was hitting my limit of how much change I could handle. So I did more things to start protecting my sense of well-being and my sense of what I needed to refuel. And, you know, we, I guess I want to have this gentle reminder when you're going through a rougher season, whether it's through change or trauma or something going on in your life, but you can feel yourself really struggling and grappling with it. You need to up your self-care. Our tendency is to do the opposite, push harder. I want to say, no, take longer walks, take, take more naps. If you're like me, you don't even take naps, start taking some nap, meditate, rest, take longer baths, do things that care for yourself in new ways because you're at capacity. And sometimes I did that well, sometimes I didn't do it so well, but as I welcomed in, welcomed in the truth of this last piece of the year, I started really welcoming in what's called a welcoming prayer. Isn't that cool? Cause it was for the word of the year, but it starts out with God, I give up all need for security affection and control. I didn't realize that I had the choice to give it up. <laughs> I just thought, oh, we all need security, affection, and control. To learn to say, I'm going to release that and give that back into your loving arms and to be guided and led by you was a whole nother thought for me. But I wanted to lean into a power beyond myself. And so recognizing that I got to release all security, affection, control was a new way to actually step into how I prayed. Um, during this time too, some anger was really coming up. I was waking up with anger. Again, anger can teach you a lot about what you're grappling with. Here's some false beliefs I started really confronting. I can't speak up because it'll cost me too much emotional energy. I shouldn't be bothered by this. We start shaming ourselves. I'm stuck and I don't know what to do. So therefore I'll do nothing. These were false beliefs that were completely keeping me stuck in hard in a hard season and learn how to say, no, these are the true beliefs I get to invite in. I get to honor what I'm feeling and find the words for lovingly express it. There's always a way forward. It's worth it to speak up because we'll all be better for it. Those were the true beliefs I began to replace those false beliefs. So as I came to the end of 2022, here's what I realized that welcome had taught me. It taught me the truth about my deep sadness. I'll be honest with you folks. I don't like feeling sadness. <laughs> so to come to terms with that was not a very fun experience for me. And some of it I had been carrying around since childhood, some of it for the last several years, some for the several decades, some for just more recent. But I didn't have a really good coping strategy to deal with sadness. And so the truth that happens around that, that's where we kind of uh, drift into more chronic states of depression and anxiety and isolation and things like that. That's our that's what humanity does if we don't deal with the emotions. So knowing this, I, I welcomed in the, the, the deep sadness in some places that I had been carrying for a long time. And that's when I hired a counselor to work it through. I also hired a spiritual director. <laughs> I, was, I had my team around me and I really welcomed in some sage voices to help me navigate some kind of troubled waters. And I got so much relief from that, got so much peace from that. And I got a lot of deep wisdom that I needed in order to move in that next stage. And ultimately I began to really welcome in a deep connection with my true self. I have a tendency to live disconnected. I think we all do, but I'll just own it for myself. Um, especially if it's like sadness or an emotion I don't really enjoy feeling, I will find ways to disconnect from myself. 
whether it's through, uh, like I mentioned earlier, it could be Netflix, it could be food, it could be busyness, it could be people, it could be people's problems, <laughs> all these things that I can turn to that I would rather do. I used to joke, man, I'd rather clean the bathroom floor with a toothbrush than have to deal with some of these things that I don't want to deal with internally. Knowing that about yourself, if you're anything like me, allows you to create a safe space around you to deal with it when you're ready and also to invite in safe people to help you so you're not alone. And I didn't even know who to ask or talk to, but as I started really praying about that and really reaching for that true belief that I don't have to do this alone, the people come. They're, they're What I'm realizing as I'm aging is there's always, there's an abundance of people and guides to help you. It's just learning how to uh, welcome that in and invite that in and reject the false belief that you're alone and that you have to suffer alone. So as I wrap up, I began to realize I was welcoming tensions of both the hello and the goodbye, the joy and the sorrow, the pain and the relief, the brokenness and the healing, the fear and the love, the truth and the timing, the self and others listening and advocating. These were all tensions I realized that was making me feel kind of stressed because I didn't know which one I should do. Should I commit to joy or should I commit to sorrow? Should I commit to fear or love, truth or, you know, what am I committing to? And realizing, oh my gosh, I can, make, I can commit to both at the same time. That's our human complexity. And that's what I'm calling holding tensions. And I write about that in my book. But other tensions I began to learn to hold simultaneously was releasing and pursuing. Releasing my son to go into college and yet pursuing him and letting him know I loved him, knowing when to reach out and call him and when to visit him and also allowing him to feel my pure joy that I released him. That's a tricky place for a mother, right? <laughs> Keeping peace. And allowing uncomfortableness was another huge tension I began to learn to hold. Sometimes I don't like it uncomfortable, so I try to hurry up and create peace. Sometimes that's not always good. Learning how to sit in both the peace and the uncomfortableness was important. Um, things like eating and fasting, resting and exercising, waiting and taking action, questions and answers, conflict and resolve. These were tensions I began to really notice that I just say, Head, you don't have to do one or the other. It gets to be both. And that's the God piece in all of us. If we let it, helps us hold tensions in life because we all like the resolve, don't we? So ultimately, I'm welcoming in more love. And I begin to realize what is love? Well, I believe love is patient. Love is kind. It doesn't demand its own way. I think love allows me to stay curious, to listen, to speak with gentleness, to respond kindly. This was the person I wanted to become more of. This is what I was ultimately learning from my year of welcome. What was I welcoming in? What had I welcomed in? This is all that I'd welcome in, which is preparing me for my new year, my new word for the year of 2023, which is patience. I felt like this next level was this awareness of being patient with myself and the growth that I'm encountering, being pa patient with other people. And honestly, it starts with yourself. You become more patient with other people when you're more patient with yourself. So if you notice you're being impatient with other people, it's usually because you're being impatient with yourself. I was beginning to see the signs with that. And I just thought, no, I'm going to start with me. It always starts with ourselves. Learning how to say, I'm going to be patient with the process, patient with God, and patient with others and the process that they need to take. I just realized... Yeah, on the heels of a year of welcome, patience is my next my next leg in the journey. So I hope that helped. Uh, you know, I'm a deep soul and a deep thinker. 
<laughs> so thank you for letting me just share with you my 2022 year. And as, as always, I love hearing from you. Many of you get to, you might text me or email me or even call me. I just love hearing your words for the year, but more importantly, I'd love to hear how your 2022 word for the year really impacted you because based on that, that's where we become changed and transformed human beings. As usual, I'm cheering you on. Thanks everyone. Thanks for joining us today. We'd love a review, helps us out quite a bit. Wherever you are, just drop a review and you can find out more at heatherpenny.com. Cheering you on.